Well, I'm definitely glad that I uh, took shelter. Alright, how's it going? This is Ollie, aka English Monkey. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I rode a motorbike from Ho Chi Minh City, or Saigon, to Dalat in Vietnam. A beautiful and scenic journey that took me through some amazing landscapes and cultures. So I flew from Hong Kong to Ho Chi Minh, um, the southern capital of Vietnam. I used Vietjet Airlines, which I highly recommend. They were very kind and gave me emergency exit seats, which gave me more leg room and comfort, perhaps because they saw uh, I'm a bit tall. Anyway, I stayed overnight in Saigon and I had booked a motorbike rental online from Ticket Motorbike Rentals uh, in Saigon. They have a convenient location to the east of the city with a wide range of bikes to choose from. You can find their link in the description below. I rented a Honda XR150, a basic but reliable bike that can handle any terrain. Um, it didn't have a fuel gauge though, so I had to check the trip counter or look in the tank to see how much fuel I had left. A pretty basic bike, but very reliable. Uh, the top speed was about 110 kilometers an hour, but I never got to reach that because of the traffic and the general road conditions in Vietnam. And the best thing about the bike had to be the suspension. It was much better than a scooter and it made riding over potholes and bumps a breeze. So I wanted to avoid the holiday traffic out of Saigon, uh, so I decided to leave early in the morning. However, the rental shop only opened at 9 a.m. But they were nice enough to let me arrive at 8.30 and get ready a bit earlier. So by 9 a.m. I was on the road heading towards Dalat uh, on the back roads. This is about 360 kilometers and uh, it would probably take me seven hours and I hope to complete it in daylight. So this route was suggested by Tom, the founder of the website Vietnam Coracle, uh, link in the description, which is a great resource for anyone who wants to explore Vietnam by motorbike. Anyway, he advised me to take the Cat Tien Ferry west across the river and our other city proper. This way, I could avoid the worst of the traffic and enjoy some more rural scenery. So the ferry was pretty interesting. Um, about two or three hundred bikes were herded into this cage. And then uh, once the boat was ready, uh, we all went onto the ferry to cross the river uh, out of Saigon. I didn't take much video on the first part of the route. It was mainly factories and industrial areas with not much to see and I wanted to save battery. But once I hit the countryside proper, about two hours in, uh, I started taking video uh, as we headed up into the mountains. Here I am, halfway in between Saigon and Dalat in the mountains. Okay, so let's just go into the countryside now. There's a lot of buffalo over there. Um, let's see what it's like. So as you can see, uh, these back roads are quite quiet, apart from the occasional truck usually, uh, as they wound their way up into the mountains. Um, at this point, the weather looked pretty nice. Just a few clouds on the horizon. This is up into the mountains more, and the ro roads got a bit twisty. Basically, I just uh, did as the locals did and uh, overtook where possible. Towns, pretty much like this. Um, yeah, more cars and vans in the towns, as you can see, obviously. A little bit more difficult to navigate, uh, random people overtaking. But generally, quite slow moving traffic, uh, so nothing too dangerous. You'd occasionally get a, a bus overtaking on the other side of the road, you have to move out of the way. But apart from that, um, it was all good. It was just nice to drive through the towns. Um, seeing how daily life is going in Vietnam, I suppose. Uh, 
Um, occasionally you got a motorbike like that just putting out randomly without looking. Um, but it was uh, all good as long as you keep your wits about you, uh, you'd be fine. And uh, it was uh, a holiday in Vietnam, the reunification holiday, and occasionally I passed through uh, like illuminations like this with uh, communist party slogans by the side of the road. And uh, yeah, lights that would uh, come on in the evening. Um, this is the second mountain pass I went up, and this one was quite spectacular. Um, had a lot of coffee growing by the side of the road and uh, had really good views either side um, you can see the coffee there on the left and right um, yeah this road went over a few rivers as well yeah occasionally you get a car that's parked there not ideal uh, yeah but this time yeah the, the weather still good so yeah, this is the first inkling uh, I got uh, of a potential storm on the horizon. The clouds were bubbling up a bit and uh, I actually stopped to check the weather. And uh, it did say thunderstorms were possible. So at this point, I was hopeful I'd be able to avoid them and uh, yeah, make it to Delat uh, during daylight hours. Um, but it soon uh, became apparent that, that, that perhaps uh, wouldn't be possible. Now this is interesting, uh, most of the little towns um, around Baolac, uh, which is about halfway between Saigon and Dalat, had uh, big Catholic churches like this one, a bit incongruous, but uh, there we go, obviously there's quite a large Christian population in these parts of Vietnam. So yeah, at this point I pulled into a petrol station and the weather was looking pretty bad. So I tried to ask them if it was going to rain, and it was a complete failure of communication. Ah, xin chào. Ah, full. Okay. Come on. Have rain? <laughs> no, I just say, is it going to rain? Rain, rain. Have rain? Water. Dalat, dalat. You go to that. Yeah, yeah. Dalat. Okay, right. Thank you. Yes. Um, I should have done better, really. I should have at least translated or been perhaps clearer uh, in my choice of words, but never mind. So anyway, um, I carried on through the coffee plantations, uh, hoping to avoid the storm. Uh, and again, still at this point, I naively thought I could go around it. It looked like it was coming in from like the, the west to the left of the road. And uh, it seemed, yeah, there was always a patch of brightness in the sky I could follow. You can see me looking at it there. Uh, it does look a bit ominous. But again, the road seemed to be veering away from it, and I, uh, I thought I could I could give it a miss. The views around this area were absolutely spectacular, by the way, uh, down the valleys. Uh, very green. Um, again, lots of coffee plantations. Um, I think this is the point where I realised that um, I'm going to have a problem, really. It did start to rain uh, quite heavily at this point as I passed through this uh, village. Uh, and then I had to make a decision, well, basically whether I'm going to ride in a thunderstorm or um, I'm going to uh, wait it out and then probably have to ride at night. Uh, both not recommended in Vietnam, especially with this type of bike with a very weak headlight, um, which is practically useless. When I uh, went on roads without street lights, and yes, uh, so it started to rain, I had to quickly make a decision and uh, once the thunder started uh, I perhaps sensibly uh, chose to take refuge in uh, the nearest petrol station. Huge storm. I thought it would be best to wait it out before we'll carry on. Hopefully it won't last too long. Okay, there's the bike keeping dry in this little petrol station here. Yeah, that's the storm. Well, I'm 
definitely glad that I uh, took shelter. Thank you much for coming in. So yeah, during my enforced delay, um, I uh, drew the attention of some local kids who thought I was a famous YouTuber. <clears throat> when I showed them my 10 subscribers, they were bitterly disappointed, um, but they still wanted to feature in the video. So uh, here they are. Hi. <laughs> What's your name? Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Oh, Chung, Chung, Oliver, Oliver, Oliver. Hi, pleased to meet you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'll put this on YouTube for them. Okay. Okay. They asked me to. All right, okay. I think the storm is finished now. The storm stopped, but the rain continued, and I put on my poncho and continued on my way. Obviously, this meant I now had to travel in the dark, and I had actually adjusted my route. Uh, away from those roads without street lights, so slightly less scenic, but it was night time, so it didn't matter. And uh, I actually followed a highway uh, up into the lat. Now it's lucky in Vietnam on the highways, uh, motorbikes aren't allowed, and they're actually uh, roads running parallel to the highways for motorbikes, which was quite uh, useful. And uh, by this time, which is seven or eight in the evening, the roads were quite quite quiet and it was easy to ride and uh, the rain actually eased off that I dried out a bit and uh, eventually uh, I came into Dalat. Uh, Dalat is at 1500 meters above sea level so it's a lot cooler than Saigon. Uh, it was like uh, only 18 degrees when I arrived there so I felt pretty comfortable if not cool uh, just uh, with my poncho and uh, jacket on. Here you can see a bit of the uh, Dalat view at night, uh, quite a busy outskirt, a first roundabout, of course the cars never give way, but again not too bad. So eventually uh, I got to my hotel and uh, went straight out to check out uh, the sights of Dalat and uh, I found a huge fair that was on. Uh, because of a uh, reunification holiday, uh, it was really lively, people selling clothes and balloons. Uh, an interesting, other interesting goods on sale I saw were uh, furry hats, because of course most people from Saigon wouldn't be used to these cold temperatures, uh, and they did a roaring trade in fur hats. So as you can see, the city centre was pretty packed with people out celebrating. Interestingly, there'd been no rain at all in Dalat. At this point. So finally uh, I found a street side stall selling bun bo hui um, which is a kind of faux noodles, uh, vermicelli noodles. Anyway here it is, uh, it was cheap, fresh and delicious. And that's the end of my first Vietnam video. The next one will be about me undertaking a ride north of Dalat on what is known uh, as Pine Tree Road.